Also, I guess we'll end it off with, uh, I've got a new keyboard. So this is, ooh. Ooh, look at that. It doesn't show up super great in the camera, but it's got RGB. It's, it's got, it, it's, well, I guess this, this isn't RGB. This is R, but it does, it does have RGB. Um, uh, let's put it on a mode where it's easy to see. This, this mode. RGB. I just, I'm not a big fan of, I could probably work with this. What I'm not a big fan of is, uh, One's like, one's like this, where it's like constantly moving. I find that to be really distracting because I can, you know, I can see my, my keyboard out the corner of my eye and I tend to get distracted by a lot of stuff. Um, so I, I, I just like, I just like to keep it on R and then, uh, yeah, we, we're good there. I guess I, I could change the color, but considering that my mouse is also red and I guess my light back there is also red now, I might as well just keep it red. I like red. Red's nice. Um, but yeah, this is a red dragon. Um, so it's on the keyboard. <laughs> what is it? It is a red dragon. K618. The uh, Horus K618. And it's got a, a bunch of fun things on it. One of those fun things is this uh, volume knob. Now, this volume knob isn't some proprietary, like, software Windows nonsense. This maps to XF86 volume up and volume down. So I can use this on Linux. And not just use it on Linux, it's bound the same way it was already bound on my other keyboard. Uh, so it just works exactly like it should. This also, being a gaming keyboard, has, like, it's got these these macro buttons along the top that you can program to do whatever you want. I'm not a big macro guy, so it doesn't really matter to me. Um, these little buttons here are your, your media buttons. There's not as many as my other one that I don't have a... Oh, no, I do have a play pause. Oh, it's just a merged play pause. Uh, okay, 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 that's fine. I'll just have to rebind stuff then. Um, but... I could have gotten this as like a 10 keyless. I like my my numpads because I like to have my numpad as a like a how would you describe it a um, macro bay basically. I I well, I guess that's the only macro bay I use. I use this as bindings for uh, like OBS and things like that. Now this is also not a Cherry Switch keyboard. I have um, famously. If you go to my channel, it's actually like one of my biggest videos. Famously said how I don't like mechanical keyboards. Um, this is not your your original early days mechanical though. So that video has oh it's not that popular. It's a little more popular. Twenty one thousand views. Um, this is a low profile linear red. Uh, I'll show you. <clears throat> low profile low profile mechanical switch this is a switch that i had been very interested to try out for quite a while so your tradition i guess the blues will work they're basically the same there's just different colors and different weights and things like that and actuation points um from the outside they look the same so this is your conventional mechanical switch they are usually on your gaming keyboards, things like that, your whatever, whatever keyboard you have. This is the more, the, the newer low profile mechanical switch. They are six millimeters thinner. And then there's also like another optical version as well. Now, a lot of keyboards will use these low profile mechanical switches, but will put traditional keycaps on them. So they're certainly thinner than your traditional keyboard, like six or so mils, but they're not that much thinner. What the Red Dragon does, and what this this keyboard is a clone of, um, the, I want to say Logitech C15. Um, C915, sorry, 915. Is it 915? 
Uh, yes, yes, it's a coin of this keyboard. Uh, it. Uh, show me a good picture. Show me a good picture. Here we go. This is the Logitech 915, and you can see it's got these very, very thin keycaps. And the exact same is true on the Red Dragon K618. These keycaps are not that common. They're not impossible to buy, um, but they're certainly not as common uh, as the traditional ones. Low profile mechanic. Uh, Low profile mechanical cap. <laughs> uh, I, you can okay, you can definitely find them. Yeah, you can definitely start finding them in places like Etsy. So presumably you'll be able to find them in other places like Amazon, things like that. Um, it's not as bad as it was a couple of years ago. If I'd bought this a couple of years ago and I ever wanted to like change out keycaps, things like that, basically you're you're kind of stuck and there's not much you can do. But considering that these are making their way out and there are actually devices using these switches now, it's getting to the point where I can reasonably use a mechanical keyboard. The problem I had with traditional keyboards is they're like, they're just way too high. You need a wrist rest for them. I know some people are fine with them, but I like my hand being as close to the desk as possible. And that's that's what my my KC Cherry Stream did really really well it is very thin and i love it and this uh this new keyboard is only a touch thicker maybe like I'd, i've not checked it but maybe maybe it's not really thicker at all actually this is a very unscientific way of measuring it let's do it the other way so they're actually the correct side um it's maybe, I would say, two or three mils higher, which isn't a major deal. I can accept that. And I think this, I, I've only just started using it today, so I can't really give my like, long-term thoughts on it. But I think I'm going to keep, I'm going to stick with this, and I'm going to use these low, uh, these, these low profile profile switch is going into the future. Now, the main reason I switched isn't because I just wanted to buy a new keyboard. There's actually two reasons. Um, firstly, you might notice that this, this Cherry, Casey Cherry Stream is missing a keycap. Um, it's here. It, this has been breaking off for a while. Now, you can get them back on, but remounting a mechanical, um, a, uh, a scissor switch is a pain in the fucking ass. So I have not done it. The other reason I haven't done it is the reason I bought the keyboard. So I bought the keyboard before this uh, this this key broke. Um, I was playing FF14. I was doing a raid. I held down the W key and I didn't go forward. So there are some points where if you actuate the key, it wasn't resetting it. So it wouldn't actually let you press it again. That was really annoying. And I just, I didn't want to deal with it anymore. It had started to become a problem a while ago. And I, I've, I've wanted to try these, these, these low profile linear switches for a long time anyway. So th this gave me sort of a good opportunity to actually do it. Maybe in the future I'll try out that Logitech keyboard this is a clone of. Because from my understanding, that is a a much uh, nicer keyboard. Like, this is not a bad keyboard in any definition of the term. Um, but this Logitech one is also, like, um, $400 in Australia. So, like, that's a lot for a keyboard. But it's well built. And I love Logitech. Like, I, I have, like multiple Logitech mice. I I am very much a Logitech shill and I'd be happy to use a Logitech keyboard as well. Um, maybe in the future that'll happen. But for now, I'm going to keep with the Red Dragon and maybe we'll see if uh, Red Dragon lives up to the hype. Because this is a company that, you know, it, it came onto the market sort of out of nowhere and made these cheap, um, these cheap clones of a lot of devices that people wanted to use. 
and they gained a lot of popularity for it. So I want to see if that hype's actually real and, you know, it's worth the money. Or if I should have gone and, like, spent the money and bought something a bit nicer. We'll see what happens and, um, yeah.